Revelation Wellness community. Today's fun. I always love it when I get to hear a man's voice in my ears. So Adam Broad is on the podcast. Adam, welcome to the Revelation Wellness podcast. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always an honor to talk about fitness, but it's an honor to be here with you as well. So cool. And can I just tell you, you have a great speaking voice. Has anyone ever told you that? No, they haven't. So you're the first. Thank you. No one's no one's ever said that. Am I the first? I'm telling you. Well, maybe it's I'm I'm connected to sound and tone, and you have a great voice. So you, when you, you speak, uh, there's something in your sound waves. It's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, so Adam, yes. be, because maybe people you're going to be new on their radar. You're kind of new on my radar, mm -hmm. and yet you're showing up in my feed more and more. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get to have a day to talk with Adam. Uh, tell people about yourself and how you find yourself where you are right now. Oh, okay. I always think these, right? yeah, these are always funny. It's like, how far back do we go? Well, I was, yeah. Born, tell us about uh, your life. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, I've been in the ministry for since, since I was 16 years old, basically. So mm -hmm. I've been in some form of church ministry, nonprofit. Um, I've spent the majority of my life. I'm 46 now. I spent the majority of my life helping people in some form know about Jesus or, mm. you know, like in some form, just leading people to the Lord. And along with that, I've always had this passion for fitness, you know, um, fitness, like going to the gym and getting stronger as a man that changed my life mm. when I was younger. You know, when I was like 14 years old, I started lifting weights. My friend's dad, Mr. George, he came and picked me up twice a week and was like, Hey, I'm going to, you're going to lift weights with us. And, you know, he was like, I'm not even going to tell you what to do. You're just going to go in there and be responsible for yourself. So that really changed my life. So these two paths together have, I have walked these two paths together for 30 plus years. And, um, you know, I've done everything from being a missionary to a pastor to, um, you know, if you name it, I've probably done it in some form. <laughs> You know, some people would call yeah, that uh, yeah. wishy-washy and you just can't hold down a job or, you know, other people might call it experienced. We'll let you decide. <laughs> but um, so I've been in some form of ministry this whole time. And one of the things that really stuck out to me is um, I've watched so many ministers just sacrifice their health on the altar of ministry um, and and gotten really you know, really got nothing in return for that other than hospital bills and a shortened, uh, a shortened span of significance and influence. So um, it really just stuck out to me that somebody has to talk about this and like people like yourself, and there's other people out there that are doing the same thing, but we all have different networks, and we all have different people that we can reach. And my goal is really just to try to help people in the ministry, pastors, leaders, or people who aren't, I work with plenty of people who need to invest in their health or find their health for the first time and realize that it's attached to a purpose. Mm. And that purpose should be your guiding vision, you know, for why did God put you here? Why, why are you here? What are you supposed to be doing? And once you figure that out, let's invest in our health so that we can do that for as long as possible. Right. So hmm. it's like we're losing we're losing ministers and pastors in their wisest years when they should be leading and guiding the next generation, but hmm. they're too busy fighting to save their lives at that point from just decisions that could have been made right down the road, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that are not that difficult in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know. So I've just I've been walking this road for quite a while and I have my own business now where um this is what I do. This is what I and do. I work with pastors and leaders. When did you make that full pivot? How many years ago? Like I'm going, this is, this is the message helping ministers with their so health. I started, I started my, I started my business slash ministry in this area probably five years ago, okay. but I went full time two and a half years ago. And what, so, so what were you doing then? Were you doing kind of straddling other ministry? Work? Yes. Yeah. 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 I okay. was, I was working with a uh, church planning organization. Um, okay. So we were planting churches all over the world and doing stuff overseas and in the U in the, in the U S and at the same time, I always had these guys coming to me and they were like, man, I, you know, I just, 
you know, I got to take care of myself. I'm suffering with these issues. So I was kind of leading and pastoring people in this way, as well as doing ministry. Mm -hmm. So eventually I had to make a decision, right? Because one was mm -hmm. going to suffer. You can't do two things well, really, you know? Right, you can, right. It's you true. Know. And you have to just make that leap of yeah. leaving that security yeah. behind of the the known to the unknown. So good job. Good on yeah. you for doing that. It's still, yeah. it's still a walk of faith. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? Do you have kids? Oh, I am. I've been married for 22 years to my wife, Kim. Um, okay. She is definitely the better half in this uh in this uh, arrangement. And I have one daughter, her name is Zoe, and mm -hmm. she is 12. Okay. Her name is Zoe Grace, because she is life to us. Mm -hmm. She is and she is life giving. And you know, we consider her unmerited favor, because awesome. we, we had so much trouble having kids. Um, mm -hmm. So we didn't have her until I was a bit older, you know, 35 mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. So she's, uh, she's definitely the little light in our world. So what a light. That's amazing. And where do you live? I'm Part in Memphis, the... Tennessee now. Oh, all our Tennesseans are they're they're giving a whoop whoop. But I am from Louisiana originally. Okay. So I'm a Cajun by culture. Love so, that. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to when you were 14 years old or how old yeah. 12 years old or something. And, 14, and this yeah. this Mr. Whoever picked Mr. you up and threw some weights your way. Like what uh -huh. what was that about for your life? Why did that take for you? What do you think that was about? Well, you know, I find, uh, you know, without getting too, too deep, you know, when you're, especially for oh, guys, we do deep. We yeah, do I know. Deep. Oh, I know. You know, I'm going to wade in slowly. I'm going to wade in <laughs> slowly. Jump, just jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Head first. Um, so, you know, when you're 14 years old and you grow up in a home that is roughly, you know, not the most functioning, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's being nice. Um, you know, but my parents did what they could do, you know, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody parents with the abilities they have, no one ever teaches mm -hmm. you really how to do it. Well, uh, mm -hmm. you just always remember when people do it wrong. So, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, Truth. I was just an insecure kid, you know, I was 14 years old, 110 pounds. I could hang glad on a Dorito, you know, I was so skinny. <laughs> so <laughs> I never heard that good one. So it was just, you know, you just, you're looking as a as a boy or as a growing into a man you're looking for your power you're looking for your strength and i had no place to find that and um you know my family didn't really offer it. i didn't have the opportunities at school so mr george who is my friend joe's dad he worked out all the time and he was hilarious he looked like a superhero right because he yeah he, he only did like upper body and then he ran <laughs> Tiny chicken legs. Oh man. But when he walked with jeans, it was incredible. He looked like a superhero, right? Like a comic book superhero. Yeah. Like the yeah, Incredibles. But, but now, yeah, exactly. I like had tiny little legs and huge upper body. That's what he looked like. But, uh, and I thought he's huge, you know? So uh. he just told me, he said, um, he and Joe were going to work out. And they said, um, he asked me if I wanted to come and I was like, sure. I was terrified, but I was like, sure, let's do this. You know? And he's like, all right, I'm going to pick you up every Tuesday and Thursday at three in the afternoon. If you're not outside waiting, I'm not stopping. Right. Mm -hmm. So he called, he called me to responsibility, make sure that mm -hmm. I did it. And then he put me in an environment where I could grow and explore with yes. these weights. And he didn't, he didn't even tell us what to do. He just put us in there and was just like, go. Right. So we did everything wrong, but <laughs> we did it with the idea of getting better. Right. Wow. So yeah. I just took to this, like, like wildfire that I had control mm -hmm. over myself, that I could incrementally get stronger, get better. And I could direct the course of my physical life in a sense. So I just, it became this wellspring of, of, uh, like addiction and passion for me because yeah. it, it was a way for me to navigate life. Right. Yep. The yep. weights never judged me. The, you know, they never, they only expected the most out of me for that day. Hmm. Right. Best I could give that day is what they were going to get. And that's all they wanted. And I hmm. loved that. And I love that I could see progress. Right. Cause you're okay. four, right. So you're taking your shirt off at any moment, you know, and you're trying to flex in the mirror all the time, you know? So it's just like, yeah. 
but it's like it worked so it just created this passion in me and i just i saw how it changed my life and i know that it has that ability to do that for everyone else i love that it just does you you know our stories are pretty similar really um yeah it's kind of crazy uh you were, you said you were 14 or 12 I was 14. My daughter's 12. So that's what Adam, I was 14. It's it written in both of my books of well, almost three of the books. I was 14 years really? old. Same story. My parents dysfunctional home. Sure. You know, you're just kind of trying to figure out and at 14. You're, you're just questioning, am I a man? Am I enough? Am I, am I a woman? And like, am I going to be loved by a man? Am I, all those things mm -hmm. are happening right there. And I had a friend whose mother came and picked me up to take me to an aerobics class in 1985. That is and I was there that I took my first class, something shifted inside of me. And it was this, this, um, uh, that ability to do something and fail. Like I was in a, a room full of other moms who were encouraging me, cheering me on. If you made a mistake was actually okay. Try it again. Right. It's very optimistic. It's very, try again, not, it, it doesn't condemn and at yeah. least at that point it did it was very pure yeah. right so yeah. that would be my next question and then i was off to the races too it was this thing is does something to me uh, mm -hmm. but for me it eventually that control part for mm -hmm. sure showed up uh did you ever get into that point where it where it became idolatrous for you oh sure of oh, sure of, of course right because um you know when and I'm sure you can speak to this and I'm sure you speak spoken with your audience to this is like when you suffer trauma, you, you find outlets and you find ways to cope. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those ways can be positive, but then overused or over relied upon that they, they can become dangerous or uh, mm -hmm. idolatrous in a sense. So there were, er there were times in my life when I used it as more of a, um, more of a drug, a coping mechanism. Mm. And, um, and then, you know, when you're young and you're getting strong, you become arrogant and proud, prideful. That's what guys do, right? That's just what we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, a guy can work out one time and feel like he gained muscles, you know, and a, a lady can work out for a year and be like, Oh my gosh, it's, it's, terrible. it's, what, so, like, it's so true. Like I could like one, like guys can work out once and be like, go and see their wife and be like, check this out. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> like we're forever 14, you know, it's just the way it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, of course it became that. And, but I will say too, though, that exercise and like lifting weights in particular has been one way that the Lord has spoken to me throughout my life and mm -hmm. used it as a, a like, like a, like a chalkboard in a sense mm -hmm. to, guide and direct me through failure, through loss, through growth, through, you know, through just coping, dealing, like, it's mm -hmm. just, he's used it because, you know, the, the analogy is the same. Struggle is good for you. Yes. Overcoming is good. Losing is good. Failing is good, right? Come because on. you learn and exercise and weightlifting has taught me you know, has just been that for me. Other people, it's martial arts, other people, it's sports mm. or whatever. But for me, it was this thing. And man, it just, I cannot, I, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have it. I truly don't. Like, it changed my life. I came across a, a reel of you. I don't know who you were talking to, but you took us all to church. You gave us all a little dress down on it was something to the effect of you know that you're no longer a little child who gets the cravings that you want mm -hmm. this like how what speak to that speak mm -hmm. to because stewardship is something that's a big part of your get yes. up every day and why you do what you do mm -hmm. yeah how, so, okay let me maybe let me let me point my question a little more okay how do we do stewardship of like, hey, you aren't this child anymore. There's you can't just succumb to the inner voice, the craving, the little thing you want to do. There is this this maturity and grow. How do we do that without condemning people? Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. That's good though. Okay, I'm up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the first thing that I tell people is stewardship. First of all, 
if you think about what stewardship is, the first thing that happens in stewardship is a recognition that I've been giving something valuable. Mm. Okay. You, Cause you don't, stu- you don't steward things that are not valuable, right? Like it's good. We, you, you steward things that are valuable. So first I have to recognize I've been given something of worth, which is my health. Mm. Okay? I've been given this thing. And if you think about like, I saw, I saw he's a astrophysicist guy. He, I'm a nerd too. So if I get too nerdy, just now go Adam, don't be a nerd. But he talked about, um, he talked about the chances of being born. Like there, the chances of oh, being yeah. born are so astronomically against you, you that more people are not born than are born. Like boom, the ratio. So, okay. First of all, I made it. I was born. Okay. God's <laughs> God, let me be born. And then I have this thing, this body, this, this whole mechanism that is supposed to transport me through this invaluable life that I somehow won the lottery on. Mm. And I'm supposed to just treat it like it's an amusement park. Cause that's mm. kind of what culture teaches us. So first is I am valuable. I have something valuable. Secondly, I have to have a vision for what, what it is like Proverbs 29, 18. What does it say without vision, the people cast off restraint, right? So vision for where I want to go gives me constraint. It mm-hmm. places boundaries. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if I have a vision, uh, I have this valuable thing and I have a vision for where I want to go. Well, then now there, there is a strategy. There's a pathway forward. And I don't, children, children need to be guided. Like children need to be guided, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like that's why you got kids on leashes. You got, you know, you got, you know, kids, you got some people's kids. You're like, you don't even invite them over to your house because these, like I had, I have a a friend like that. He, his kids at one point when they were little, I was like, y'all ain't coming to my house. (laughs) <laughs> I, I painted these walls y'all putting holes and stuff when y'all get bigger y'all can come over because the kids were unruly right but i think a lot of us as adults we treat ourselves this way yeah. right we 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 act as if because i'm an adult because i can choose i can do whatever i want but there mm-hmm. are no free rides that's right, right. And everything i choose there's a plus and a minus there's a consequence to it now, it's not to make it super heavy. I'm not trying to tell you you can't ever have ice cream. That's not what I'm saying. Right. right. I'm saying the majority of your decisions should be based off this vision that you have for where you want to go and in stewarding this great, valuable thing that God gave you. Right. So my decisions are based off of where do I want to go? Not what am I mourning in the past? Mm-hmm. Not what, like, what am I feeling today? I'm not going to eat my feelings. Right. Mm-hmm. Because when we like, that's what we're taught, right? When yeah. babies start crying, what's the first thing people do? Shove food. In their yeah. yeah. In their so we're taught that when I cry, I eat. And then when we're all excited and we get happy, what happens? There's cake. Let's celebrate together. So mm-hmm. all this emotion and everything is tied around it. And we have so many people in the world today who are just emotionally immature and out of touch with who they are, what their purpose is in life. So they end up just kind of eating their feelings. And then not really stewarding this thing that is so valuable. And then you 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 don't realize how valuable it is until it starts breaking down. Not it starts breaking that's down. It. Yeah. And when it starts breaking down, the the margin for success becomes really narrow because it's really hard to turn back that clock. Yeah. As amazing as the body is, it's still it's still finite. So yeah. it's just, you know. I Having this revelation is great. I heard a quote today that it's it's easier to repair something than to fix something. Mm-hmm. Right. So if most people don't realize our bodies uh, until it's time to fix it, like it's I've got it's broken down. It's on the side of the road. It yep. is not good, and it looks like a short future for me or a, a, I don't get to go far. I don't get to enjoy life because my body is breaking down. It is, it needs to be fixed. 
-hmm. where if there's this just to repair, it's easier to repair things as you're going because you're in tune with, oh, the the oil light is on here. Oh, mm -hmm. I need to replace the brakes. Like mm -hmm. it's that being in tune with the very thing that gets us through life. But yes. wouldn't you say, Adam, that it does come back to you because you said it yourself that stewardship is about, first of all, the value and from value, you get the vision, mm -hmm. but we don't value. What do you think that's about? Oh, you know, I, it's a, that's a really tough one because I think everyone's perspective on who they are obviously is is built around how they were raised their environment how they talk to themselves what kind of what do they consume how what kind of media do you consume um because we're always we use everyone else like so this is like i just so you know i talk with my counselor yes me too so she says like your parents are supposed to mirror back to you the person you're supposed to be right but if your mirrors are cracked and broken you get distorted images of who you yes. are yes. right but we do this in in other areas of our life too we get on social media and we use that that as a mirror on who we're supposed to be and men do Oof. it as much as women i promise you yeah like, as a man i can tell you we do it just as much we just don't talk about it mm. okay we're just not going to be like, I saw her and I was just like, we're not going to do that, but we're going to, we're going to internalize. Yeah. Hey, I see that guy. He's really winning and I'm not winning like this guy. So I'm a freaking loser or, mm. you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, we're using these mirrors and I think that we constantly take our own value down mm -hmm. because we're comparing it against somebody out of context. We're comparing it. Uh, based on what somebody else's highlight reel looks like, um, we're still we're still running off of negative software from the past. So, you know, the studies show that people will. The studies show that people are better at giving their pets their medication than they are taking their own medication. Think about that. You value wow. your pet more than you value your own health. So I think there's this yeah. image issue we have. And I think that this is where the scripture comes in. I think this is where walking with the Lord comes in, yeah. where he starts yeah. renewing your mind, yeah. showing you a true mirror of who you should be, right? For women and men, men need a masculine mirror to look and yeah. see like what it means to be a godly man, what it means to be masculine, but not toxic, strong, mm overbearing mm. protective mm. but not you know arrogant yeah so it's just like we need this mirror and i think that's where the scripture comes in so we have to marry these two right we have to yeah. I have to get a good view of who i need to be and then i need to reflect that back and do some work yeah. on the inside so that i can value this thing you know yeah. it, gro it grows in value as your mentality grows with it too right yeah Oh, I have so many things I want to go. It's just so good to speak to a guy. I have to tell you, because there's things that I've got questions about from a female male point of view. Yeah. Maybe I want to ask this question. So let's say you work with male pastors or just male, anyone who comes your way. How do you start to restore value to that? How do you do that? How do you get value them to be thinking in terms of value and in touch with value? Because they don't, like you said, men maybe don't talk about it like women mm -hmm. do. Well, tell me your experience in that. Well, thank you for that. I work with both men and women. Okay. I work with anybody who is willing to work. Right? There you go. So yeah. That's the thing. If you're willing to work, I can work with you. Um, but with men, men and women are just built differently. Right. I find like with my female clients, um, verbal affirmation is very empowering for them. Mm. Right? Like, Hey girl, you can do this. Like, mm. What you doing with those five pound weights? Your kid weighs more than that. And you walk around with them with 45 <laughs> minutes on your hip. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You're way stronger than you think you are. Uh -huh. Right. So like that verbal affirmation, especially from a male is for some reason, it's true. Whatever, it's true. and they see me as a strong person because, you know, you have this authority figure kind of thing happening. Guys, on the other hand, they have to prove their strength in order to feel their strength, right? 
So we just get them moving forward. And I'm just like, just get in there, bro. Like, I don't want to hear any excuses. You get in there and you lift those weights. And then once they feel stronger, mm. it's change that mentality. So men are very on the physical. We're very outside focused much more. So once I start to feel my body getting stronger, I start believing it mentally. Women, I find to have to find first get in their head and then they'll express that with their bodies. Woo. It's like the opposite, right? That's good. So, That's good. but That's guys, guys, but guys are yeah. simple. Guys are simple. If you just get them to lift weights and sweat a little bit, they're automatically start feeling tough and it changes. It's just amazing. Well, it goes back. It goes back to what you're saying. Like they lifted one time and they're like, I'm a superhero. I'm huge. And they go home and they like, like thinking like they're all that. And that's yeah, I've got guys sending amazing. me, I've got guys sending me pictures with their shirts off and stuff. And they're like, check this out. And I'm like, I didn't ask for that. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I love that. Okay. That's going to speak to the audience that's listening. Cause I know there are some men here listening as well, but for women, yeah. like we got to get out of our heads. Like we're so yes. much in our heads, biting the lie, the battle. And, and it does go back to the consequences of sin. Women, our thing is we are we're always looking, am I enough for the man? Like I will constantly be looking to the man and his eyes will be somewhere else. Right. So we're kind of, we're doubting, uh, do I have value? Do I have worth? I need someone else to tell me that, which is probably why when you say in a male voice, you're doing great, it hits something and we actually might start to believe it. Yep. But for men, they're pretty outward focused in yep. that. Let me do this thing. Let me go and let me get the strength on yeah. or whatever. But at the same time, at some point there has to be for men as they go about growing in that, mm -hmm. I gotta be able to get inside of what yeah. the, the more scary places mm -hmm. to be, right? Cause I think for men maybe, and women too, like we'll just, if I just put on a strong exterior, then all will be well. Yeah, I find, I find too that, um, and this is just, you know, I've been a man my whole life, so. Turns out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Good to know. Good to know. Um, is that we tend to, um, we are doers. We are fixers. We are, this is why like some, like your wife, will have to tell you, I, I just want you to hear me. I don't want you to do anything. <laughs> right? Just listen. Right. That's my wife will do. She's like, I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to hear it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm like, all right, I'm not moving. Um, but we tend to grow as we do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, you know, when Jesus healed the lepers and he said, go, you know, like go to the pool of Siloam or whatever it was. Yeah. It says yeah. they were healed Wash. as they went. Yes. They were healed as they went. So that's what the like training and physical, like physical struggle does for all of us. But for men, it's very much like once they start doing it and like feeling their strength and they, they heal along the way, because that's when guys start calling me and like, First, their questions are about exercise and like getting bigger biceps, but then it becomes, Hey man, I'm dealing with this. I've got this going on on the inside. My wife and I are fighting. So you end up counseling through this True. For ladies. It's the opposite. Yeah. It's the opposite direction. First, you're like, it's okay. You're good enough. You can do this, you know, like yeah. deal yeah. with all this stuff and first. Then and then they're like, yay, you know, and they start expressing that power later. So it's just, yeah. it's very, it's very, it's interesting, you know, we're isn't it, different. isn't it? It's the tension It is of, of the, both of us being image bearers of God. This yeah. is both God's heart. Isn't that cool? Exactly. Like God is both of that. He mm -hmm. is very much wants to be, you know, that, that connection of who yes. I am and now I'll go do, and he's the God who does. And so then I can get in touch with yes. the who I am. Yes. And I love that. All right. You talk about, uh, you say this, well, no, I'm gonna ask you two questions. Okay. What is fitness, Adam? If someone says, Whoa. what is fitness? Because then my second question is going to be what is, uh, that you say fitness isn't only science. So I want to talk about that as well. So okay. unless they, they merge together, but what, if someone says, what is it? What's fitness? What would you say? Well, I think if we just look at the def, I tend to be pedantic, you know, like I like words and I tend to be a bit of a word nerd. So if we look at fitness, um, it's the, it's the ability to, it's the ability to be enough in specific areas. 
-hmm. right? So whatever the demands of life are. So if we're talking about physical fitness, then it's enough, it's being enough to handle mm -hmm. your normal life, right? This isn't, fitness doesn't mean elite. It doesn't mean I can run six miles faster than everybody else. Those are different definitions. For fitness in general, for most people, I find it's just the ability to move well without pain, to move mm -hmm. my own body weight, be strong enough to manage my lifestyle, mm -hmm. to avoid injury to the best of my ability, um, have a relatively good body composition because that is an indication of health. It's mm -hmm. not an indication of whether you look good or vanity or anything. Right. Having good That's body right. composition is about health. It's not about abs and taking pictures of yourself. Amen. Um, although you can do those things. Um, but fitness is more about navigating life well with a, as, as little injury and as little discomfort as possible. Good. Um, but then there's also a, a mental health component to that. There's a soul health component to that. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Because not, all your challenges don't just hit you physically. They hit yes. you mentally and emotionally yes. first. Yes. And then they express themselves physically. So we have to be fit in all those areas. Now, fitness isn't only science. What does that mean to you? Because that's what you say. Um, fitness isn't only science. I think that science can do a lot for us when it comes to our physical fitness. But I think that there is... There is a learning process. There is a there is a falling and getting up process. There's a resilience process to all of this that requires more than just information in your brain. There you, you go. Know? Because I think science is great. Science is beautiful, right? We need it. Mm -hmm. It's it does it answers a lot of questions mm -hmm. and it helps. But then um, it tends to paralyze some people because they just get stuck on information and stop doing. Mm -hmm. So fitness is a lot about walking down the road and being on that journey constantly and putting one foot in front of the other and you grow into health, right? So I tell people like health doesn't just, you don't just have it or not have it. You grow into it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's about skill acquisition. So you're acquiring the skills to live a healthy life and navigate the landscape that we live in over time. And you get better with it with repetition, just like you mm -hmm. do your bench yep. press or your shoulder press. Yep. You get better with it with repetition. So it's the science helps us. The science helps direct us. But then it's the other intangibles like your resilience and your grit and your ability to move forward that actually helps make fitness possible. So it, it's a coupling okay. of the two. Let me, let me play devil's advocate. If I was to ask you, Adam, what's the one thing if from a science perspective about fitness that I would need to know to improve my health, talk to me from mm. science. Okay. What, what would be the thing you'd be like, okay, if there's one thing scientifically you should know about your body. Um, no. Well, I would say if there were one prescription. Yes. Okay. So if we look at, if we look at what most people, 70% of us Christian or non-Christian, mm -hmm. okay. Are dying from diseases of lifestyle. They're diseases yeah. of choice. Yeah. Right. They're not diseases yeah. that most of us are not just obesity doesn't just jump on us. <laughs> we, we play a role. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some more than others. Right. So there's a lot of nuance and context to all of that but we're dying of lifestyle diseases. So one of the things that the, probably the most potent intervention that we know of in science is exercise. It literally mm -hmm. is the most potent intervention more than any drug, more than any, any superfood that somebody on Instagram is trying to sell you. It literally is okay. So, like you're like so. As strong as the correlation is between smoking and lung cancer and death, the correlation between health and a VO2 max, like good respiratory health, is stronger. Mm. Like it's like four hundred percent like correlation. Mm. Like it's like 
Like mm -hmm. one of the number one things that you can do for your health right now is just go for a, a run, right? Just yeah. go for a run, lift some weights. Like it's the most powerful intervention that we have. There's no medication. There's no Ozempic. There's no semaglutide. Come on, come on. Those things can be a part of that, mm -hmm. but nothing, nothing will separate you from moving your body and, and making it stronger that correlates with health. Nothing. Like we don't have anything else that works as strong as this. So if, if you, if you needed science to tell you something, it's you need to go exercise. And there seems to be no upper limit on how mm. much there seems mm. to be like the more, the better within like with up to a, a point where you're not stressing your joints out and going crazy. Right. Right. But I mean, truly it is yeah. undeniable. It's undeniable at this point. Yeah, I'll back that with the research I've as well that I've seen that the quickest way to move your biomarkers of good health is to just move your body, like yes. go for a walk right now. Literally just, if you want something inside of you to shift that points you towards the right direction of health, go move your body, which we know is just about elevating your heart rate, mm -hmm. rest, blood flow, mm -hmm. then all those chemicals that just naturally get released that are often mocked in the pills or things that we take. Like we have 100%. it all inside of us. We are a living medicine cabinet inside yep. of us, mm -hmm. but it is this push against comfort. We just want to sit in our chairs. We are so sedentary. There's a great book. I encourage you, if you uh, on this uh, topic of moving our body, but it's called Exercised. I can't remember who wrote oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened have you to read it? it? I yeah, it's a it. good, yeah. it's a good audio, right? Very the whole good. fact that we were never meant to work out. We were never no. meant to have this kind of life. We were meant to be like that tribe that he talks about. Oh gosh, why am I forgetting who they are? Sand people. That, yeah, the people that go out and hunt and gather, like they are mm -hmm. about life. We were connected to the earth mm -hmm. more than we are now. And so exactly. this is why sitting is what they're called that new smoking, because we're just not active yeah. we're not embodied mm -hmm. people anymore we're computers we're heads yep. we're information mm -hmm. yep. so yeah I agree. that's good yeah I all agree. right i have a couple more questions um you write as as i worked more closely with people who devote their lives to helping others i realized how many sacrifice their health for the welfare of others yep. what would you say to the person who right now they are knee deep in parenting kids working at the office um caring for their spouse the person who says, I don't have time to train. I don't have time to exercise. Ooh, this is a tough if, you, if you can fix this, you, you'll you be a millionaire because this is the thing. Everyone always says, I don't have time. Okay, so there's there's a few caveats to this. And this is where I usually have a coach voice, okay? Coach. Because, because it has to, there has to be a level of agency here. Hmm. Like there has to be a level of, I'm in charge of myself. Hmm. And if you don't have that, it doesn't matter. Like nothing's going to work. Yeah. But when people like, especially leaders, and this is where, you know, I was with my pastor and we did a podcast talking about this and he was like, why you got to be sarcastic? Right. So it was just funny. <laughs> I said, I said, when I talk to pastors and they say, well, man, I just don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to take care of, you know, to work out. I'm like, that's incredible. I wonder who's making your schedule. I wonder who's in charge of that. <laughs> Should we talk to your assistant? And they're like, ah, oh, okay. So one thing is some of us have enough control over our schedule that all it takes is to prior prioritization. It just, it needs someone to just prioritize it. That's what it is. Okay. Other people, when you're like a mom, you've got three kids and you know, you're just knee deep in like homeschooling and you know what I mean? Like it just feels yeah. like your life is chaos. Yeah. That's when you still have to prioritize, but flexibility comes in and behind mm -hmm. all of this must anchor a sense of purpose and a sense of I'm adding value into the thing that I feel I'm called to do. Yeah. To value. I, yeah. It's, if it's not a value, motivation will not be enough. When it, when it gets hard, you're going to sacrifice it. You're going to let go of it. 
It's just the, that's just how we're built. So if we can make it a core value, then it will show up on my calendar. If I'm a leader, Hmm. it will show up like a meeting on my calendar and it is protected because it's not vanity. It's not, it's, it's not an indulgent to go to the gym. It's, it's a, it's an investment that produces dividends for the future. And it ensures my ability to do what God's called me to do for a longer period of time. And then for the mom who's having trouble, it's more about holding on to that purpose that I want to be here for my parents, which I just started working with a lady. She's a volunteer at our church and her husband passed away. And she's like, I've got three kids and I really need my, I need to be in better shape so I can be here for my kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. That that's, this is our purpose value yeah she works a lot so it's like okay well then we have to say when i want to sit and watch netflix and unwind maybe i can do that when i'm on a stationary bike there you go maybe i can do that um, when the kids are doing their homework i can go out for a quick walk Mm -hmm. um you know what i mean it's finding time to express that value and it's going to always be hard it's always Mm -hmm. difficult Mm -hmm. there's no such thing as balance Mm, amen there's Say no such again. balance there's no okay. balance because we have the wrong definition of balance the the definition we have of balance is stagnation it's just like mm. everything just sits but the idea yeah truly balance is always trying to find come on always working to find a way to keep things moving forward that's balance right if you stand on one foot if you look at your foot, it's constantly moving, trying to find a balance point. So there's no such thing as balance. So we're always yeah. having to pull back on that purpose and say, okay, how do I find a way to invest in this today? And the smallest investment still works. I, I think Einstein mentioned that compounding interest is the most powerful thing in the universe, right? So compounding interest. So if I can just get 1% better, mm-hmm. If I can do a little bit each day, then I'm going to eventually get to where I need to be. But there's no such thing as not having enough time. I'm sorry. They're just love it. And I hate hate saying that because some people are like, you don't understand my life. And you're right. I don't. But, you know, we all have the same 24 hours a day and somehow people get it done. And it's, it really comes down to priority and what, like this is when adulting comes in too. Do I want to sit and watch Netflix for two hours or, you know, a two hour episode is a long time. A 20 minute run, it seems seemingly a lot less time. So you're actually saving yeah. time by exercising. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. or scrolling Instagram or, you know, like the kind of stuff is like, we have all these bleeding, these time, these areas where our, our time bleeds away unknowingly. And then when we're called to the carpet to take care of ourselves, we start we start calculating and acting like, you know, all of a sudden I've got everything under control when really we just need to go through and figure out where our priorities are and start finding places to invest in that purpose and, you know, cut things off that you know you don't need. Like nobody needs two hours on Instagram. Ah, ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? <laughs> no, like- oh man, such... Right. It comes back to what if we took inventory of our time? It, it's like money, right? People don't want to pay attention to where their money goes. And then it might have to actually be called the carpet where same thing with where am I spending my time? Where could I cut back on time? And all of this, my brother from another mother, we know just comes at the cost of comfort for people. 100%. It is costly. If this was easy to do, if it, and, do and we could be comfortable in growth, we'd all be these amazing growth developed people. But it's about that comes back to the value. Is this it's valuable not. to me? And when and, something's and then, valuable, you're willing, to, you're willing to suffer for it. You're willing to sacrifice and, for it. And this is where our faith of Christ, who God is, who died for us because we're so loved, so valuable to him. Mm-hmm. That's where y'all, we are, we're plugged into something even more powerful, but Mm -hmm. that has to be valuable that I love my relationship for God. And he so loved me. And Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey the commands. You'll be able to do these hard things just because you love. And then that, Mm -hmm. that, that is the healing work that, uh, we all 
continually need to Love do that. is what am I loving? Who am I loving? And come, come back. This is why we need community and people that will, will speak into us to say, keep going, keep doing the hard thing. Yes. Okay. I went way over our time because I really <laughs> enjoyed this conversation with you, Adam. Um, rapid fire questions before yes. we let you go. Uh, favorite way to move your body? Oh, I lift weights and do jujitsu. I saw that jujitsu. That's yep. a fun time. My, my yeah, husband's yeah. done that. Have you been injured in jujitsu? Because he has. Of course. <laughs> That's grown, why you guys do it. These grown oh men in pajamas gosh. fighting each other. Of course. Oh my gosh. Somebody's gonna so get hurt. Funny. That's why I'm like, please. When he gets does it, and he's like, oh, I'm so sore in my neck. I'm like, oh yeah, don't man. Do it. And he's no, like, no, no. That's we love that. Like that lets me know oh, I did it. I love it. You guys are funny. Okay. Uh, favorite way to move your body. Favorite. Uh, what's your apparel line choice clothing of workout that you wear? Oh, I'm I'm not that. Uh, okay. Where do you shop? I mean, it could be anywhere. This is good for the guys. Tell okay, us what the so guys wear. For normal clothes, I like barbell apparel. Very nice stuff. They fit guys who lift weights. Okay. Okay. There, because you know when okay. you start lifting weights, you're not built. You're not built the same. Um, yeah. And then for like workout clothes, I'm pretty much like, I like like Rogue's stuff, mm -hmm. uh, some of Nike stuff. I'm not too picky on all that. Like people are like, I'm a gym shark. I don't, <laughs> I'm like, if it holds up and it doesn't smell when I'm done, I'm doing all right. You know what it's I mean? True story. All I'm right. And then boy when it comes to that coffee, tea or kombucha. Oh, coffee. My God. The best cup oh. of is not even close to the worst cup of coffee how many do you have a day oh well i drink <laughs> i drink half calf now okay half okay. decaf now so okay. i'll have two or three cups of coffee a day okay okay not too I'll, bad I'll, i'm not living on it i'll allow it i'll allow it we'll let it go all right <laughs> All right, Adam, everyone can connect with you you guys Adam has a, a book tell them a little mm -hmm. bit about an ebook yeah i have an ebook called um uh, faith and fitness, integrating you know, physical health and your spiritual practice. And you can get it on my website. It's at, it's at adambro.com or on Amazon. You can look there too. And it's just an ebook. I'm, I'm setting it up to where it'll do drop ship, like, um, actual copies of the book, like physical copies. I'm setting that up. That should be done in the next week or so. Um, and it's just a book that kind of tells my story a little bit, um, and goes into more of the science behind some of these basic things we need for our health, like, you know, sleep and sunshine and, you know, yes. moves, like uh, that kind of stuff. So um, it's a little bit of my story. It's a little bit of, you know, I make a case through the scriptures and then I give you some science to help walk away with Love it. some practical takeaways that you can start implementing today. Love it. And then you guys, you can connect with him at Adam Broad, B-R-A-U-D. We'll put the show notes so you can swipe yeah, up on the show notes to great. go over on Instagram and follow him. Um, Adam, you're yeah. a delight. I'm really grateful that you came across my feed and my my awareness. So we're going to have yeah. you back, everyone. I know oh, we're going okay, to want, want Adam back. So we'll be reaching out. So thanks again. That'll be awesome. Can't wait. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching and remember this video was brought to you by Revelation Wellness Instructor Training Program. Do you love Jesus and have a passion for fitness and wellness? Or maybe you're tired of the roller coaster of obsessing over and neglecting your body and you know there has to be more to fitness. Let us equip you to lead others to health and wholeness rooted in Jesus Christ through our faith-based fitness instructor training program. Go to our website to learn more and listen to testimonies of people just like you who are bringing hope and healing to their communities as fitness teacher gospel preachers. Click the link in the description of this video and download a packet to get your journey to health and wholeness through Christ started today.